hello, hello everyone. I'm back with another knitting podcast. My name is Christy Archer of Christy Archer Designs. And as I said, this is a knitting podcast. If you are new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy what I have to share with you today. I am going to be going over um, quite a few different types of projects. So I should have something for everybody today, which I'm excited about. Um, and if you are a returning viewer, you know how much I deeply, deeply appreciate you returning, spending time with me each time, commenting below, telling me what you're working on and all of that fun stuff. Um, I would love if you would take a quick second and give me a thumbs up. Um, it helps my videos reach more viewers and I would love to grow this little community that I have here. Um, I do not personally have anyone in my life that knits. I do not have a local yarn shop. Um, so you guys are it as far as being able to chat with and share my projects and talk to people who understand. So yeah, um, if you can give me a thumbs up and I would love if you enjoy my content to have you subscribe and click the notification bell so that you know when I have a new video up. Um, I'm trying really hard to remember all of the standard hoopla. Um, you can find me on Ravelry. That is where you can find most of my, all of my patterns. I do have a good many of my patterns also on Knit Picks. And um, you can also find me on Instagram. So I will link everything below, of course. If I forget something and you have a question, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to share any information I have. So with all of that out of the way, we are gonna get into the fun stuff. So I think it's been about a week and a half maybe two weeks since I last podcast. I know I'm a little off schedule. I'm trying to get back to filming every Sunday, posting every Monday. So today is November something. It's the week before Thanksgiving um, or the week of Thanksgiving in the U.S. will be this Sunday. Um, oh, also I am in the United States in Southern California in the desert and I'm hot right now. <laughs> I just turned the air down so hopefully I will cool off very soon. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get right into it. I am going to start, this is a very traditional podcast, so what I'm wearing, I am currently wearing the um, Holiday Slipover by Petite Knit and it is a pattern that I have made quite a few times and I think I'm still going to make one more, one more version. Um, that being said, I am going to segue into real quick a future uh, video that I'm going to be making about all of my holiday slipovers. And I have made four right now and I'm getting ready to I believe I'm going to make a fifth one so with that said I have learned quite a few tips that I would love to share with you um, about the modifications that I have been making and um, I actually have my fourth one to share with you today so we'll get to that in just a minute um, I also wanted to say I currently have um, winter, oh goodness, winters, I just looked at it on my iPad, which is in the other room. I can't remember the name, so I'll pop it up here, but this is a sweater um, pattern by Heidi Kiermeyer. It was one of the first few sweaters that I had ever made, and I really do like the sweater. 
Um, it is a top-down construction. It has this beautiful texture to it. I do not remember the yarn that I used. I want to say it was Sugar Bush, which I really do like Sugar Bush yarn. I think this one was a worsted weight, and I don't remember the color, but I will link the project page to this sweater, so if you have any questions, uh, my project page should answer anything. If you do not have access to Ravelry, just ask if you have a question and I'll let you know. Um, okay, so those are out of the way. I have two finished objects, one that is almost finished and should have been finished, but we'll get into that in a minute. So my first finished object, Actually, I finished the other one first, but I'm gonna share these first. This is one of my patterns. This is another Simply Irresistible sock pattern. And this is one that I'm especially proud of. I am super, super excited about getting this one released. I think it is probably my favorite and normally, that would be the newest and greatest, but this is actually one that I made a while back, um, designed a while back, and I'm just now getting to the point of releasing it. I have, this one kind of took a back seat. I wasn't quite ready for the release of it yet, but anyway, all of that said, I love, 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 love this sock. So, let's see. Okay, this is a cuff down construction. Um, if you are not new here, you know that this has a heel construction that you don't have to stop and do anything special. You knit this from the cuff all the way down and then you decrease for the toe. So you just follow the instructions. And I'm sorry I'm covering my face. Um, I don't normally like to do that, but uh, I wanted to be able to focus on this. Okay, so this has... Um, this beautiful basket weave texture to the front panel and of course the standard rib in the back that hugs the foot beautifully so i had the first one done like i said a while back and i just now finished the second one so i have a completed pair of socks i do have the pattern written i am ready to put it into testing i have two current tests going on, one sock, one vest. I'm getting ready to start a this sock test and I have a cardigan and a pullover that I'm also going to be doing test calls for. If you are ever interested in testing for me, I have a link to my newsletter. Um, you can sign up for my newsletter, and when you sign up for my newsletter, you get the option of um, what newsletters you want to receive. So do you want newsletters on new pattern releases, podcast releases, um, new test um, calls, things like that. So you can choose one, all, whatever, um, email you would like to receive from me and I'm going to start using that before much longer. So sign up for my newsletters. Um, so uh, I guess yarn information would be helpful here. Sorry about that. This is done out of um, Yarn Nouveau's Bliss Sock Base, if I'm not mistaken, which is an MCN and it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, sock yarn. I really, really, really do love working with this. It is, it's, it's blissful. <laughs> um, so I highly recommend Yarn Nouveau and I will link that below. So that is the first finished object we are going to discuss. And trying to figure out the best place to put all of my stuff. Okay, the second one is another um, holiday slipover. And it is by Petite Knit once again. This is a top-down construction. It is done out of very bulky yarn. I believe my stitch gauge is 11 stitches. The pattern actually calls for 10 stitch 
to, per four inches. So mine runs, I make the second size, but it ends up being a little bit smaller. So I think it's probably in between the first and second size. It works well for me. Um, this one, I did make quite a few good modifications and um, I'm very excited about the modifications I made on this. I will quickly go over the mods, but again, I am going to be doing a full-on episode discussing the modifications that I make for all of this. Um, so with this, let's see. You can see right there that I did it such that I have a distinctive um, increase everywhere. So instead of doing make one left and make one right, right on the edge, I, slit, uh, I knit two stitches away from the edges, whichever direction that was, and then I, um, feeding time um, and then I did um, lifted increases you could still do make one right and make one left and achieve the same basic uh, feel but I I just prefer making lifted increases um, they just work better for the way I knit so I did lifted increases and you can see that I did it for the arm increases as well as, again, the neck increases. Um, and this one is done out of the same yarn that I've used for all of them. This one is out of uh, Lion Brands Hue and Me, and this is Colorway Wolf, which is a black heathered yarn. This one I think is going to be probably my most worn once. I, I, I haven't worn it yet because I wanted to do the podcast first, but um, it does have the split hem. And it does have the high low, but when I blocked it, I completely forgot that on this one, I did it longer in the back. So when I blocked, I pulled both of them pulled both of the hems down the same length, but it is, it's like four rows, I believe, shorter in the front. Um, the next time I block it, I'll block it correctly. <laughs> but um, yeah, very, very, very pleased with that. Um, it may be my Thanksgiving Day uh, garment. I'm not sure. All right, uh, that is finished objects out of the way. On to whips. So, uh, last time I podcast, uh, we discussed the cardigan that I was making and I am loving the way that is going, and that is what is almost done and should have been done. However, I want to quickly discuss why it is not done yet. So, um, and it is gonna be wrinkly from being in the project bag. Okay, let me see the best way I can show this. So, last time I did not have the sleeves done. Um, so I have both sleeves, love, 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 and they fit great. Um, if you are new here, the reason I say that is I was making the champagne cardigan using different yarn and I got the, got through the yoke, joined to work in the round. Once I ran out of yarn there, I picked up and did one of the sleeves and it was just massive. It was so big. Um, so anyway, long story short, I went back and just made my own pattern. And this is one of the patterns that I will be doing a testing call for. So it is very similar to the champagne cardigan, but it does have uh, slightly different construction and fit and yarn and all of that good stuff. So it is, um, 
a top-down raglan construction. It has a very deep V on it, and I wasn't sure what type button band I was going to be doing. I did decide to go ahead and do the double knit button band. Um, on the double knit button band, I wanted to make a few changes to that from the typical application of a button uh, of a double knit button band. So this is kind of where I hit pause. Um, I wanted it to be, first of all, normally when you do a double knit button band, you'll pick up all of the stitches, then you break the yarn and you come back and you cast on for your double knit button band and then you work around. Um, each time you come to where you're going to place a buttonhole, you break the yarn, you work one side of the buttonhole, well, before you break the yarn, you work one side of the buttonhole, you break the yarn, you work the other side of the buttonhole, and then you rejoin in the round. So every time you um, have a buttonhole, there's a, an end to weave in, which I don't mind weaving in ends, but my issue comes in if you need to go back and make changes or adjustments you've broken the yarn and so you may end up with odd random pieces so i didn't like that so i wanted to figure out a way to do a buttonhole without breaking the yarn so that's what I've done, and I was testing three different ways of doing it. I have three buttonholes. <laughs> so, okay, there's the first one, and I like the way that one looks. Um, there's the second one. I do not like the way that one looks. And then there's the third one, and that was my favorite. I do like the way that one worked. Okay, so back to the beginning. I wanted to do this with as few breaks in the yarn as possible in case you ever had to go back and, you know, rip back for whatever reason. So what I did was instead of picking up my stitches, breaking the yarn, coming back, casting on, and then working and breaking for each buttonhole, what I did was I measured out a tail for the length of picking up my stitches all the way around. I used the tail to pick up all of the stitches so that my working yarn was then waiting for me right here. Um, then what I did was in order to cast on, I needed to be able to, I don't know how to explain this, which is gonna be fun writing it. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing videos because I think videos for the way I've done this is going to be much more helpful. But anyway, so there is a tail from where I finished the um, button band, I mean, I'm sorry, the hem. I broke the yarn there, which now that I think about it, and the reason I did that was because I went to the sleeves then and did the sleeves before I did the button band. So I may end up changing that. Okay, <laughs> I won't go into that part. But the buttonholes, I will write that into the pattern. And basically what I did was I, you know, did until I got to the buttonhole and I worked the outside edge of the buttonhole first. And then instead of breaking the yarn, what I did was cast on the number of stitches that the height of the buttonhole was. So for every row of the buttonhole, I cast on a stitch. Then I went down to, um, okay, I went back down to work this part of the buttonhole and um, I used the first stitch or the last stitch that I cast on and 
uh, knit it with the first stitch of the buttonhole. I keep losing it. So I had stitches cast on, just on the needle, and I would use the last stitch that I cast on and knit it together with this one. And then I would work my double knit and the second stitch, a second to the last stitch that I cast on, I would knit it with this first stitch, so on and so forth. So there's no breaking of yarn. Um, and that worked out. I did have to fiddle with it, like I said, a few different times. I had to figure out the right cast on. Um, I found out that doing a um, purled knitted cast on uh, was the best way to get the cleanest edge. Um, is it worth it? To me, absolutely. Is it worth it to other people? I don't know. Tell me your opinions on that. Um, would you prefer not breaking the yarn and casting on the extra stitches and doing it that way? Or would you rather just cut the yarn, pick up the stitches for the other side of the button band, work that, and then join? Um, let me know your thoughts on that because that may that may, deter, uh, that may decide how I write the pattern. I would love your opinions on that. So um, this is my currently named Everyday Cardigan. It has a beautiful oversized fit to it without being massive. Next time I will be able to put this on and show it to all of you and get the uh, test call out and get this in testing. So I'm very, very excited about that. I have discussed the yarns in the past, but I will quickly go over them again. If you want more details, you can watch the previous episodes. Um, I'm using Knit Picks Aloft for the mohair, and this is colorway silver, if I'm not mistaken. It has a beautiful sheen to it. And excuse my nails, I'm going through something with my nails right now. And then the uh, main yarn is um, Knit Picks Woolen, Woolen Cotton. Sorry, it took me a minute. I don't have a yarn band. I have it anytime I've podcasted this one for some reason. Um, this is 50% wool, 50% cotton. I love, 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 love this yarn. The color name on this one, I think it's like Dolly Heather. Excuse me, something like that, I'm not sure. So, that is my second work in progress. And my third, sorry, it's in, this one's in a big project bag. It's actually holding two projects. Um, I won't get into that, but anyway. <laughs> okay, there's that. Um, my second work in progress is something I'm very, very, very much enjoying. Um, having a great time with this. I cast it on yesterday and I joined in the round today and I love the way this is going. So I've made this pattern before. I will be making more, which we will discuss shortly. This is a Stockholm slipover. This is the crew neck version. And this is um, a top down construction um, you start in the back, work the back, pick up the left shoulder, work that to the arm, uh, to the neck opening, do the right shoulder to the neck opening, join, work down to the armhole, cast on stitches, work in the round, very basic. Um, I had bought yarn from Wool and Company a while back to make these. Let me show those. Okay, so I had bought this uh, Cascade Cascade. 
This is Cascade um, 220 Sport. Sorry, I had an itch. Um, this is Colorway Doe Skin. I found that this wasn't quite heavy enough. It wasn't giving me the fabric that I liked. So I wanted to knit these vests so bad. Um, so what I did was I went back to Woolen Company and I picked up I really not bring the yarn I should have a yarn band. Really? Oh, okay, I have one for one of, let's see. Um, okay, that's why I didn't bring it. So, I picked up this Lang Alpaca Super Light. Um, I love this. So I wanted to try this instead of a mohair. Um, and I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. I, it, I don't think it is a, it, it does not have the same look as a mohair, but for something different, I really do like the way it's working up. So this is, um, Let's see, 54% alpaca, 24% polyamide, and 22% merino fine wool. Um, it's very soft. If you have an aversion to um, mohair, this would be an excellent substitution. I was, that's what I was going on here for, was to figure out the meterage. Uh, let's see. So it's 25 grams, just like so, uh, mohair. 199 meters. Alexa, how many yards is 199 meters? Alexa, how many yards is 199 meters? 199 meters is about 218 yards. So about 218 yards, 199 meters. Um, I bought, I believe I bought three balls to do a vest. Um, and I am making the second size vest um, in the pattern. This is the fabric that it is giving. Let me turn it around so you can actually see it. So you can see it does give a fuzzy effect. It's not long like mohair. Uh, I was gonna hold up a strand. I don't know if that's helping or not, um, but it is very fuzzy. It's just not long fuzz like mohair. Um, and like I said, I am enjoying working with it. I do find when I work with mohair, sorry, it's tangled. Um, I do find that when I work with mohair, it pulls really tight the way, <laughs> you can see indentions on my fingers I've been knitting this morning. The way I do my yarn is like this, which is probably a lot tighter than what most people, um, tension their yarn and with mohair it it really pulls tight on my finger and I can't work with it for too terribly long because it starts almost like cutting into my skin this I don't have that problem with so I am enjoying that aspect of it as well um, okay so this is Cascade 220 doe skin and then uh, Lang alpaca super light cannot remember the color way, the color name. Um, I'm thinking it was something like beige. I was gonna see if it had a color number. 749, I think is the color number. Um, 
but yes, I love this. Love the way it's working up. It's super fast. Um, and I'm debating on either this being my Thanksgiving Day garment or the holiday slipover. We'll see. Haven't decided yet, but love, love, love the way this is turning out. Okay, that said, let me do a real quick interruption and let you know that if you are not new here, you will notice my hair is up in a ponytail. It's probably still wet. Um, it is 424 and I just recently got out of the shower for the day. <laughs> if you guys know me, that's not highly unusual. Um, I'm thinking about growing my hair color out back to my natural color. And so with my roots, it looks bad. And if I wear it in a ponytail, you can't tell how bad my roots are as much right now. So bear with me as I possibly grow my hair out um, or grow the hair color out. I do dye my hair black for those of you that do not know. Uh, this is something I did about a year, maybe a year and a half ago and I have enjoyed it immensely, um, but I'm kind of missing my natural color, which is an ash blonde. So I'm thinking about going back to my natural color for a little bit. We'll see how, how far I get with that. <laughs> okay, back to the knitting. Um, so this is, uh, let me take a step back. I am currently co-hosting a knit along with Lisa from Yo Yarn Girl. Hi, Lisa. And um, it is a vest along. The hashtag is Vestival 2023 Mal, if I remember correctly. I will pop it up here. Um, if you use that hashtag over on Instagram, you will be entered for prizes. Um, and you can also enter over on Lisa's Ravelry group if you would like to do it there. Um, I will get that link and post that below as well. So, um, if you do not know, I'm currently all about the vests. I'm really enjoying them living in Southern California in the desert. We have very mild winters. Um, I love working with wool, but full on wool sweaters, I don't get to wear them that much. Um, I find that vests are just the right amount of warmth on a chilly day, if we are ever going to get any. Um, I, I can wear them inside without an issue with the AC going. So, um, that said, that will, the vest that I just showed will be my third, um, contribution to the cow. And I still have two more, possibly three. Um, and I will discuss those now. Oh, nope, I have one more whip. Let me go over that real quick. Sorry. Okay, so my other whip, while I was waiting on this yarn to come in, um, and I was waiting to kind of figure out what I was doing with the cardigan, I had to let that kind of stew or simmer. Um, I decided to cast on another camisole number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I've made this before. I did use, before I used um, Lana Grossa's Eco Puno. Love that yarn. It was not the called for yarn though. And I did find that it didn't do the best binding for that particular pattern. So I did have the um, suggested yarn in stash and decided to use that. And this one's kind of in timeout right now. This is, um, again, my favorite things knitwear, camisole number nine, and I am using um, Knitting for Olives um, woolen. It's the wool cotton. 
drawing a blank. Cotton merino. And this is colorway black. Um, I'm getting gauge um, with the suggested needles and everything fits and I've tried it on. I just don't love the fabric. So I think <laughs> two balls into a three ball project. Um, and I keep picking it up and just knitting on it anyway, but I think I'm going to frog this and go down a needle size because I think I will be happier with the fabric. Um, I just, I don't know, it just doesn't have the substance to it that I would like it to have. You can somewhat see through it. And I'm not crazy about that with the Eco Puno. It's fuzzy and so it filled in and it had a denser fabric and I want a denser fabric with this. I do have four balls. So even going down a size, if I have to use more yarn, I'm okay with that because I do have it. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think this one's going to be frogged and re-knit. Um, I just think I'll be happier with the end product. And like I said, I've tried it on and it fits fine, but even the fit could go down a size too because the fabric is just so, not dense, it's very thin. It doesn't fit to my body the way I would like it to fit. So that one I think is going to be a frog project. Okay, so that is FOs, that is whips. Now we're on to, nope, I have one more whip to discuss. I'm gonna get to my future knits, I promise. Okay, this is a massive project that I have been working on for a very long time. I love it, but I've hit a brick wall with it. And this is a blanket that I am working on. I want this blanket so bad. I love the colors, I love the stripes, I love everything about it. It's super, super squishy and we're going to be getting into cold weather within the next month or so, I hope. Um, so the problem that I have run into with this is that it is so heavy now that I'm struggling to knit it. And I hold it in my lap and I'm like, it's really not that heavy, but when I go to work on it for some reason, it just feels super heavy. So I am at about the halfway point. So I think what I'm going to do is go to the other end of the blanket and work towards this and then graft it together. Um, I just don't know how successful I will be grafting garter and the reason is is when I knit garter I purl every row because I prefer purling over knitting um, especially when it comes to garter um, I don't like trying to knit into purl bumps it just drives me nuts so I purl all of my rows so I think what I'm going to do is do a couple of swatches of garter and play around with um, grafting them and see if I can get a graft that looks completely seamless and if that's the case that's what I'm going to do on this because I really 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 want to finish it um, and I would like to finish it before the end of the year so this is 
another pro and this is since the last time I showed it I believe that's that's all that I've knit that's it because it's just so heavy um, so this is done out of Hobby Lobby's I love this yarn yep and I've discussed all the colors but I will quickly go over them this is denim light denim something denim stone wash stone wash I think this one's olive clover <laughs> okay zero for two this one is clover I'm not even gonna try to guess the next two since I'm obviously not doing well let's see this one's dark denim And then this one is antique white. And I, I think this is one of those projects, once it's done, I am going to use it every day. So I really do wanna get this finished. Um, have you guys ever knit a blanket before? I have not, this is my first one. And it is definitely a task, um, but I think it's something that I will truly, truly, truly enjoy the end product. And I'm enjoying the project. I just reached a point where I just physically cannot do it comfortably. I could do it, but I'm literally at a pro just over the halfway point. I can't even imagine going any further with it getting heavier and heavier. And I don't know how to explain it or why it feels so heavy to me, but it does. So that is that. Am I truly done with whips right now? <laughs> I think that's it on whips. Okay, so for the cow, the vestival cow, I am going to do two more vests besides the ones that I have already done and the one I'm in the process of. And it is going to be out of the same yarn combination as the one I'm currently working on. So we have Cascade 220. There we go. And this is colorway. I've discussed it before. West has West in it. I can't remember. Anyway, and then um, the same Lang Alpaca. So, it's kind of, that's more accurate. Can you tell I like blue? Okay, so that is going to be another Stockholm vest. I believe I'm doing the V-neck version on that one. And then I am doing same combo in these two colors. And this one may be a V-neck as well because I have quite a few of the crew necks. Um, and I think I only have one of the V-necks. So, um, these are actually closer in person, closer to, closer in color in person, but this is a little bit darker. I think that's a good representation. So yeah, future knitting. And the cow goes until December 15th. So obviously there's still plenty of time. Uh, vests do not take that long. We would love to have you join. Lisa and I are both doing prizes and we would love to celebrate our love of making vests with you. Um, current whips are welcome. The um, cow started November 1st. So if you started 
after November 1st, of course, your project is welcome. If you started before November 1st and you were no more than, say, 30% through, you are um, still welcome to join. So we welcome WIPs, and um, I would love to see your projects over on Instagram. Um, I have not been that active on Instagram this past week. We had some family things come up, and um, that has kind of put me behind on a few things. So, um, yeah, don't want to think about that right now. Uh, happy thoughts. And I think that's it. Again, this episode has gotten a little bit longer than I had hoped, but it's not super, super long, I guess. Hopefully you're still with me. Are you still with me? <laughs> um, tell me what you're working on, even if it isn't a vest. Um, if you have any vest recommendations, um, I would love to hear them. I do have one um, cabled vest that I'm wanting to do, and I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head. I'll pop a picture up here along with the name of it, and that is one that I'm definitely wanting to do. Um, I think that one will be more like a springtime vest though, because I will probably wear that one without a shirt underneath. So it'll be more like a top versus a vest. Um, but yeah, having fun, fun, fun with all of that. Uh, did our grocery shopping yesterday for Thanksgiving. I am so looking forward to that. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. We don't really celebrate holidays here in this particular household. Um, I don't really believe in um, commercialization of holidays. So we don't do a lot of that, but when it comes to Thanksgiving, uh, I do not cook. Um, but Thanksgiving, I do, I do break out the pots and pans once a year. <laughs> I know that probably sounds crazy to a lot of people, um, but yeah, I do not enjoy cooking. I love baking, do not enjoy cooking. I do not enjoy the mess. I do not enjoy the cleanup. Um, I'm not very good at it. So, uh, am I alone in this? I know most people love cooking. Um, <laughs> is there anybody else out there with me on that? Uh, so, I eat a lot of snack foods. I drink a lot of drink. I, If I do cook, um, I do like vegetables a lot. And if I quote unquote cook them, I just barely toss them in some oil on the stove and heat them up a little bit and eat them. I like very natural vegetables. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving. We're actually doing a turkey and a ham this year. Most of the time we only do ham, but my husband really wanted a turkey this year. So we're doing that. And then we are doing um, macaroni pie or macaroni and cheese, whatever you want to call it, it's baked. Um, and I am doing a spinach quiche and of course deviled eggs. And what else am I doing? Uh, we're of course doing dressing, we're doing a turkey. So I'm doing a sourdough dressing this year, um, which I'm excited about that and what else, what else? Uh, for desserts, I am doing a blueberry cobbler um, and we are doing lemon bars and I will probably home make some brownies as well. Oh, I hope you're still with me. I wanted to share a podcaster that I just recently discovered and the brownies reminded me because she just shared a brownie recipe that that is what I'm going to try for Thanksgiving. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying her. Her name is Sophie, and she is from Cozy Meadow Knits here on YouTube. I hope I'm saying her 
YouTube channel name right. If I said it wrong or either way, I'll pop the name up here and I will link her below. Please go check her out. She's from, I believe it was Brunswick area, Canada. She is precious, precious, precious. I'm thoroughly enjoying her. I do have a couple of other new podcasters that I want to share with you guys. Um, I will talk about those in future podcasts, but definitely go check out Sophie. Um, I discovered her and then I've gone back to the beginning and I'm watching all of her episodes through. Um, I think she's probably in the late teens, early 20s as far as number of episodes. Um, so it won't be too hard to get caught up. And I think I'm at episode nine right now. So probably somewhere around the halfway mark of getting caught up and really, really, really enjoying her. So definitely go check her out. Let her know that I sent you. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you for hanging out with me. I, I really enjoy this time that I get to spend with you um, discussing something that we have in common. And I do love, love, love reading your comments. So even if you're not working on something right now, just say hi. Just let me know that you stopped by and hung out with me and, um, and just let me know that you came by. I want to see that you visited. So thank you so much. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested. I would love to have you here. Thanks so much. Bye.